Welcome back for another video about HAProxy. Today, I want to show you the most important elements of configuring HAProxy. HAProxy is built from the ground up to be a load balancer. That means it has a singular focus on routing traffic between clients and servers, and that focus has shaped its configuration language. Many of the concepts you'll see in the configuration file are drawn from the idea that you want the ability to scale backend servers separately from the clients connecting on the front end. An HAProxy load balancer listens for incoming connections at a chosen IP and port, and at the same time it manages a cluster of servers. It then acts as the middleman, passing requests and responses back and forth, allowing you to scale out the number of servers without clients being affected. In other words, it gives you high availability. Let's go ahead and look at the configuration file. It's located at slash etsy slash haproxy slash haproxy.cfg. Here I have an example haproxy configuration file. It has a global default and listen section. Typically, an HAProxy configuration file is made up only of a handful of sections. These include global, defaults, listen, front-end, and back-end sections. Let's take a closer look at the global section. The global section sets process-level instructions for HAProxy. For this example, that includes the following settings. Max connection, which limits the number of connections HAProxy will accept, which protects the load balancer from running out of memory. Log, which tells HAProxy where to send its log messages. Stat socket, which enables the HAProxy runtime API, which can be used to disable servers and health checks, change server weights, and other dynamic changes. And SSL default bind ciphers and SSL default bind options. The first lists SSL and TLS ciphers that will be used by default, and the second lists the SSL and TLS options such as SSL min ver, which disables support for older SSL protocols. Next, take a look at the default section. A default section sets various default values that will apply to the sections that follow. You choose settings that are common across the rest of your configuration so that you don't need to repeat them in each listen, front end, and back end. Each of these settings can be overridden if needed by specifying them again within the respective section. In this example, I've set mode HTTP. The mode defines whether HAProxy operates as a layer 4 TCP proxy or as a layer 7 HTTP proxy. Next, log global instructs HAProxy to use the log directive from the global section. Option HTTP log tells HAProxy to log more verbose messages that are helpful for HTTP traffic. Option forwarded 4 records a client's source IP address and places it into an X forwarded 4 header. There's also Timeout Connect, which defines how long to wait for HAProxy to establish a connection to a backend server, Timeout Client, which defines how long to wait for the client to send data, and Timeout Server, which defines how long to wait for the server to send data. Now we get into the real power of HAProxy. A listen section creates a public endpoint to which clients can connect. It then relays those connections to one of the servers. In this example, the www listen section is using the bind keyword to accept traffic on port 80. It's then passing that traffic to one of the two servers, either web1 or web2, which are listening privately on port 8000. A listen section accomplishes two objectives. It begins listening for client connections on a certain IP address and port specified with a bind directive, and it defines a pool of servers that should handle each request. The simplicity of a listen section makes it ideal for cases where you want to relay connections to the same set of servers without a need to redirect some requests to a different set of servers. You may be curious about the label www on the listen line. Each listen must be given a name, but you can set this to whatever you like as long as it only consists of upper and lowercase letters, numbers, dashes, underscores, dots, and colons. Suppose you did require more complex routing behavior, such as the ability to send traffic to different clusters of servers depending on a condition. Then it's better to split a listen section into two parts, a client-facing front-end and one or more back-end sections that contain the servers. Let's go ahead and change the listen section to be a front-end and a back-end. A front-end covers the client-facing duties of a listen section, while a back-end covers the server pool duties. You can switch the orders of these sections so that the backend is defined first. HAProxy is smart enough to parse them either way. Splitting your configuration up into front-end and back-end sections is advantageous when you want to introduce more complex routing behavior. In this example, the front-end relays all traffic to the back-end with the name web servers by looking at the default back-end directive. If such a back-end isn't found, HAProxy will fail with the new configuration and give an error. 
So now let's introduce some advanced routing logic. If you wanted to send all traffic by default to the web server's backend, but all requests for PNG files to a backend named static resources, then you would do these steps. Add a new backend section named static resources, then add a use backend directive to the front end with an if statement that says when that backend should be used. There are other types of sections that you can add to an HAProxy configuration file, but these are by far the most important. Global, defaults, listen, front end, and back end. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel for more.